Welcome back to the Forge of Sagas. In today's video, we're going to be combining the Morkonaut kit with the Warmaster Iconoclast Titan from Adeptus Titanicus to build the newest addition to the Straw Hat Grand Wa, the Iron Free Buddha, General Frankie. So, without any further ado, let's get started. We're going to start off by assembling the Warmaster Titan torso. I picked this kit specifically because it's going to give us those nice rounded shoulders and long limbs that we see in the General Frankie that we're just not going to get out of the original Morkonaut kit. It's just too squat, too dumpy, I don't like the way it looks. I focused on getting all of the core components together just so that I got a good grasp for the body while I was building this, but I left all of the decorative armor panels off. We'll get to those a bit later. I assembled most of the Morkonaut head as per the instructions, but I wanted the jaw to hang a little bit down because it's not resting against the body anymore. So I just came in with my knife and shaved off the bottom of that little collar. That way it'll rotate more freely. Here you can see, it slides nicely down, so we're going to do that to the other side as well. I apologize for this not being on camera, but you know, sometimes you don't catch something till you're editing the film. So here you go, you can see you made those little cuts, and now the face looks a lot more natural. Once we've got all that assembled, we can go ahead and do a quick dry fit just to make sure everything's lining up nicely, and it is, but we won't glue this in just yet. We'll come back to that when we have a little bit more assembled. For now, let's start looking at armor. Now you can choose the traditional parts that come with the Warmaster Titan, or you can grab some orky bits as well. There's a ton of wonderful bits that come out of the Morkonaut kit that you can use to really give your Morkonaut and or Gorkonaut that nice scrap feel that we want from any orc vehicle. However, in order to make way for some of our wonderful orky bits, we're gonna have to scrape away some of these Imperial insignia. Just take a sharp knife and shave them away a little bit at a time. You can also use a file, but I wanted to not damage any of the edging, so that's why I opted to come in here and just patiently shave it down with my knife. Another place you're going to have to scrape things flat is the back of some of the armor panels. These details are wonderful, but they're going to prevent us from having a nice clean contact point, so they're going to have to go. Again, just shave them away with your knives and files until you have a nice flat surface. And now is my favorite part of any kit bash. Putting the magnet in that I forgot to put in earlier for the bit I want to make modular, aka the custom force field. To solve my issue, I put some super glue on the side of the magnet I want to stick to the outer wall and then grabbed some other magnets and tried to essentially guide it into position using the magnetic force. It was a bit tricky, but I did eventually get it into place. After that, I came in and drilled out the back of the custom force field to make room for the magnets that I need to put in there. This is going to help it slap up against that shoulder pad that I've glued in place and just allow it to come on or off depending on whether I've decided to spend the extra points for it or not. Or, you know, again, the Gorkonaut can't take it, so it can't be there all the time anyway. The next magnet we're going to need is going to go in this little gun port on the side, and it's going to let us switch between the custom Mega Blasta and the Scorcher. So we're going to glue that magnet in place and then glue this armor plate over the top to help lock it in place. Add a little bit more super glue in the corners just to create a really solid bond between the magnet and the model. I had to make a few minor modifications to both of the weapons to make sure they fit snugly in the gun port. For the Scorcha, I just had to trim away a little bit of the top and the bottom section in order to get it to fit a little bit more nicely. I just pressed in from the side until I got to the main body, then I came in and sliced away that little bit, and then just smoothed it out. And see, now it fits in nice and snugly. On the other hand, the end of the custom Mega Blaster was way too long, so I came in with my jeweler saw and cut it down until I had it at the appropriate length, and then smoothed it out using my knife to make sure I had a nice flat surface. Here we go, we're going to do a quick little dry fit to make sure we've got that at a natural length, and I think that looks good. So let's put some magnets in our little guns. Since both these little guns are made from two pieces that you glue together, you're going to want to really firmly press them together to make sure that your magnet hole is drilled to the appropriate size. These pieces will want to come apart on you, but keep your grip firm, take your time, and you'll get a nice magnet hole. I feel like Frankie would appreciate our use of science to be able to swap between our weapons to achieve the different forms of the god machines of Mork and or Gork, depending on what you need. However, I did have one little issue with, uh, with the magnets that I didn't anticipate until I was playing with it. This, uh, this custom force field's a little floppy. We didn't even get it to spin. Whee! Uh, however, that's not gonna work for our model. We need that to stay straight up. So we're gonna have to install something to keep it in place. 
the solution I came up with was to take two of the horns from the Morkonaut kit and add them on either side of the custom force field so that it would end up being locked in place as it just wouldn't be able to fall down, it would catch on the horns. So, grabbed a little bit of super glue and then positioned the horn so that it would support this little bit sticking off of the KFF. That way it'll rest nicely. I did the same thing with the bigger horn on the other side and you can see it does rotate a little bit still, but it's much more stable than it was before. Then. If we want to swap that out, we don't want to leave that big empty space, so we'll just grab another horn, put a magnet in the back, and use that to fill in the gap. Now that the left side's been armored up, it's time to get some other, more orky armor on the right side. I did use one of the Adeptus Titanicus shoulders, but for the rest of it, we're going to go with some more orky paneling, a little bit more scrap. So over this gun port, I installed this little piece with the light, because I figured, you know, a little headlight, that'd be fun. Doing orky armor is just about slapping everything together and making it look organized but chaotic. Make sure you don't have any big gaps, make sure everything generally lines up, but you know, raid your bits box and have fun with it. And this is how it looks at the end. You can see that I covered up all of the original attachment points from the Titanicus model, but in a way that has that cobbled together orky feel that we know and love. Now that we've got a torso, we're gonna have to address the legs and more importantly, the base. This bigger base is the Morkonaut base, and the smaller base is our Warmaster Titan base. Obviously, we want this to count as a Morkonaut, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of that Warmaster base and focus on our nice big base. In order to create a little bit more of a dynamic pose, I 3D printed this crashed Devilfish to attach to the base. I will link the file for this in the description. I just thought it was a little cool add-on since the planet I want my orcs on also has some Tau on it. Plus, I think it's a more fun take on the very stereotypical, heroically standing on rocks pose that we see in so many models. Now that we've got a base, it's time to move on to the legs. And one of the things that you're going to notice is that on the Titanicus legs, they've got these little notches that are supposed to help you assemble the legs to get the pose that's on the box. However, we're kit bashing. We don't want the pose on the box. We want to be able to bend this knee joint. So we're going to come in with our knife and shave away this little protrusion that's preventing the knee from rotating. There are going to be a couple of other places in the model where you're going to have to make slight modifications, but they're all pretty simple. You're just shaving down little pegs like this that prevent the model from shifting freely. So just make sure you keep your eye out for it as you build the model. I dry fitted the legs just to see what kind of height I would get, and the Morganaut leg was a lot shorter than the Titanicus leg, so that's not really going to work, so we're going to have to find a way to make this Morganaut leg longer. However, what is long enough is this piston section from the arm of the Morganaut. It's not supposed to be used here, obviously this is way too thick, so we're going to have to go ahead and cut it down. I came in with my clippers to start just removing the pegs and trying to slim it down as much as possible. Then I came in with my knife to help continue shaving it down. I ended up completely removing one of the gears after tons of trimming and dry fitting, but this is one of those things where if you take your time, you're going to get a nice, clean fit at the end of the day. With both legs mostly assembled, it's time to start dry fitting for a pose and seeing what we could come up with. In addition to trying to find the coolest pose, I was also trying to find the best way to ensure the maximum contact points between the model and the base. So, one of the things that I did was remove the top hatch of this 3D printed Devilfish. That way I could come in and mount the big fat Titanicus foot over it, that way I could ensure that the model had really good adhesion to the base. Now that we're happy with our pose, we can start assembling more of our Titanicus leg, and one of the most important pieces for us to keep loose is this back support strut. This is going to help us dial in that last pose, so we're going to cut away the little piece from that rail that helps it stick at the proper angle. We don't need that. And then we're going to glue in these two side panels, but we're not going to put any glue on this support strut to allow it to rotate freely. This way we can pose it as we need to. I glued the Titanicus leg in first just to help give me a frame of reference for the rest of it as I put the torso back on and just really tried to dial in the final positioning of this piece. But once I was happy with that, I came in and I glued the whole thing together. I was pretty generous with the super glue just to make sure I got a good bond, but you know, pushed everything in together, finalized that nice pose, and grabbed the top just to make sure everything lined up the way I wanted it to. And there we go. Now we've got the basic setup for our legs. Now that we've got the pose secured, we can come in and add all the other little details that go with the leg, like these other support struts for the front. Just because now that our pose is locked in, it's a little bit easier to get them in the right position. 
Now that we're finished with the legs, it's time to start building our arms. And for the base of it, we're going to use these shoulder couplings from the Titanicus kit. Normally, those empty spaces would be filled with guns, but they're not really the right scale for what we're looking for. So we're just going to leave them empty and face them directly out. Don't worry about it, we'll cover up the hole later using some more orky armor. Now you remember to make the leg of our Morganaut, we used what was supposed to be the arm. So we're going to have to reverse this and build our arm out of our leg. So to start, we're going to assemble the leg pretty much how it's supposed to be. Again, shaving away a lot of the connection points where they would normally lock into places on the Morganaut kit to give us space to attach them to our model. Here you can see that for the Titanicus arm joint, we shaved it down so it fits in very nicely and wiggle that around so that, that way we'll have room to pose it later. In order to get the big old claw of Gork and or Mork to fit onto the arm, we're going to have to do a little bit of shaving on both the outside of our arm as well as on the inside of the claw mechanism. This is one of those things where you just want to take it a little bit at a time, constantly be dry fitting, that way you can ensure you end up with a nice, clean fit at the end of the day. I assembled the claw per the instructions as, I think it just looks good as is. Then I came in and glued it in place on the arm in a way that made sense. Nothing too crazy here, but this just shows that all the hard work I did with the trimming pays off as it slots in really nicely. It took me a while playing around with the posing to get the claw where I wanted it to be, and despite some efforts with the gluing to try and get it to stick, and after a while I did get it generally where I wanted it. However, it did fall off a little bit later, so I had to come back in with a little bit stronger industrial grade glue rather than just the generic super glue I was using to get it to work, but that's okay. It ended up being better to keep off and paint and sub-assembly anyway, so win-win. Now we're going to cover up this hole with one of the shoulder pads from the Morknot. There's a few little bits and bobs you have to trim off, but it's a really nice organic fit under the Titanicus shoulder pad, and it covers up that little hole that we've got very easily. That's the arm for smashing, but you know what this model needs? Some DACA. We're going to start using the normal connectors for the Titanicus arms, as this is going to give us the most amount of flexibility in order to get the gun posed perfectly right. Here you can see I've left this nice and flexible, we'll add some glue to it later to stiffen it up, but for now, I want to be able to change this as I need to. We're also going to come in and add another one of these shoulder pads, just like we did on the other side. We've still got one more piece of leg laying around for the Morknot, and we're going to use that to attach our gun. Just like in all the other places, we're going to shave away a lot of the connecting pegs to give ourselves a nice flat surface to glue to. Once everything was shaved down, I came in and attached it to the end of the Titanicus arm. I really liked how this stuck out at a weird angle as it just fit that very orky aesthetic of, I don't know how this works, I really feel like it shouldn't work, but because the orcs believe, it does work. Now we can finally get onto the gun itself, and one thing I did want to keep in mind was that I wanted to be able to switch this between a Gorkonaut and Morkonaut. And this is going to be a real pain because this gun component has to be flipped around to switch between the custom Mega Zappa and the Death Storm Mega Cannon. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by just pressure fitting the two pieces together. I personally found that the pressure fit was pretty decent. But if you want a little bit of extra security that also fits in with that cobbled together orky vibe. You can go to your local hobby store and buy some cheap jewelry chain and just wrap it around. The friction will help hold it together and it just adds a little bit more orkiness. Now that I was happy with my test fit, I came in and I mounted the gun on the end of my arm. This was admittedly the easy part. The tricky part was getting the arm to stay in place with all of the weight I just added to it while the super glue dried. So to start the pose, I laid the model on its side to get the glue where I wanted it. Then I stood it up and just held it in place a little bit with my hands until I was happy. With all of the core components in place, all that was left to do was to add in as many fun details as I could. Whether I was using the smokestacks from the Morknot to fill in the gun placements of the Titanicus kit, adding in some rocket placements inside where those Gatling cannons were supposed to sit in the main body, or adding any other random armor plates to cover up, maybe not the neatest transitions I've ever made in my kit bashing life, or generally just to bulk out the miniature and give it that tough Lord of War feel that we expect from any Morkonaut, but especially the General Frankie. This is just a fun place in these kinds of projects to let your creativity shine and go as crazy as you like. And after a quick coat of paint, 
The Iron Free Buddha, General Frankie, is ready to join the ranks of the Straw Hat Grand Wa. And as Big Mac Frankie would say, that is super! Anime pirate shenanigans aside though, I do hope you guys enjoyed this kit bash. I do genuinely think that this conversion looks a lot better than the original Morkonaut kit, and I think it would look great in any orc army. If you're enjoying what we're doing here on the channel, give us a like and subscribe to keep up to date on all of our future projects, including the Road to Armies on Parade 2022. This is my entry for Battlefield Behemoths, so you know that Orcs is going to be one of the armies you'll see on my end of the year board, so stay tuned to figure out what other army made the cut. If you have anything you'd like to see me tackle on the channel, whether it's terrain building, conversions, or anything else you think would fit, leave it in the comments and I'll take a look. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again the next time we ignite the Forge of Sagas.